Hello then, good afternoon. This is L24 World News and these are your headlines. Wild decides whether he has violated the country's term limits. Thailand's constitutional court suspended the Prime Minister from his duties. Mid wars that Russia may carry out missile attacks in Kiev, Ukraine is preparing celebration of the Independence Day that marks the 31 years of the breakup with the Soviet Union. The leaders of Germany and Canada said Tuesday a new hydrogen pact will kickstart a transatlantic hydrogen supply chain, with the first deliveries expected in just three years. Millions of Angolans will head to the polls Wednesday to vote in the country's fifth multi-party elections between the ruling party and main opposition party. Hello again and welcome those who are today's top stories. Pro-democracy protesters have assembled near the Thai government's house in Bangkok demanding Thai Prime Minister to resign when his eight-year Prime Minister terms ended on August 23, 2022. During the gathering in the capital, protesters performed the ritual to curse Prime Minister and it's worth mentioning that the latest Thailand's constitutional court suspended the Prime Minister from his duties on Wednesday while it decides whether the man who led a military coup in 2014 has violated the country's term limits. The people are suffering. It's difficult to earn a living. Prices are rising. Oil prices are on the rise. And eggs are expensive. Everything is expensive. Nothing is good right now. Pray youth shouldn't run the government anymore. After the night of August 24th, Prayuth is an illegitimate prime minister. He must get out. In a different matter, the U.S. said it has launched airstrikes in eastern Syria targeting infrastructure facilities used by groups affiliated with Iran's elite revolutionary gas corps. In a statement on Wednesday, the U.S. military central command said that raids in Syria's Deir Azur were ordered by President Joe Biden, but there was no immediate command from Syria's government. Opening uh, the Ukraine-Russia file, Ukraine celebrates August 24th, which marks both the day of Ukraine's independence from the former Soviet bloc and six months since the start of the Russian military operation in Ukraine. Hussein Berkan. Air raid warning. Disrupted morning quietness in Ukraine's capital on Wednesday as Ukrainians marked 31 years since they broke free from the Russian-dominated Soviet Union. A day that marks also six months exactly since the start of the Russian special military operation in Ukraine. In a speech on the occasion, surrounded with Russian-destroyed tanks in Kiev center, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his country will fight the Russian invasion to the end and will make no concessions or compromises. We only care about our land. We will fight for it until the end. We held on for six months. It's hard, but we clenched our fists and we fight for our destiny. The narrative of the president witnessed a remarkable change as Zelensky affirmed that peace is no longer a choice and the goal now is victory. Every new day is a reason not to give up. What is the end of the war for us? We used to say peace. Now we say victory. We will not seek an agreement with the terrorists. Ukrainian President and First Lady also honored the victims of the Maiden Uprising. Kyiv residents celebrating the day never expected the war to last for half a year. I hope war will end during this year, so we can be joyful next spring and will not lose these times. I'd like it to happen. I'd like us to get more help, so this can end sooner and we start living the happy life we had before the war. After six months, 
Russian forces have expanded control to areas of the south, including the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov's coasts, and chunks of the eastern Donbas region, in addition to Crimea, which Russia annexed in 2014. The International Atomic Energy Agency said in a statement on Tuesday that the United Nations nuclear supervisory body will visit the Zaporizhia nuclear power plants in Ukraine within days if the talks gain access succeed. There have been calls for demilitarizing the power plants amid fears that could bring the world down to nuclear catastrophe. It's worth noting that Russia and Ukraine have repeatedly accused each other of firing at Zaporizhia facility, which pro-Moscow forces took over soon after the February 24th war. We once again urge the parties to provide the IAA mission with immediate, secure and unfettered access to the site. The United Nations Human Rights Office expressed concern about plans by Russian-backed authorities to try Ukrainian prisoners of war in the port city of Mariupol, possibly within days, saying such a process could itself amount to a war crime. The Russian-backed authorities appear to be installing metal cages in hold in Mariupol as part of plans to establish what they were calling an international tribunal. Speaking to the British outlet Sky News in an exclusive interview, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said on Wednesday that NATO allies need to invest more in defense spending. He also warned that Russia could step up military activity and spill over the conflict to NATO allies. We need to spend more uh, on defense. Uh, and I have been a politician myself for many, many years. And, and I uh, know that, of course, uh, it is always uh, more tempting to spend on health care, on education, on infrastructure instead of spending uh, on defense. Uh, but uh, when we live in a more dangerous world, when we see the aggressive actions of uh, President Putin against uh, a sovereign, uh, peaceful nation in Europe, Ukraine, and all the threatening rhetoric against uh, NATO allies, then we need to invest more. And from Europe to Asia, Myanmar marks five-year anniversary of Rohingya crisis, which according to Amnesty International must also mark turning point in the urgent demand to bring justice to the victims and hold those accountable. On August 25th, 2017, Myanmar's military started conducting violent military operations against the Rohingya population in northern Rakhine state, which resulted in a killing of more than 2,000 people and around 740,000 people fled their homes homes heading to the neighboring country Bangladesh, where nearly one million Rohingya refugees live there now. Amnesty International stands in solidarity with the Rohingya people who are in Rakhine state and the estimated one million refugees living across the border in Bangladesh. Real justice is essential to end the spiraling cycle of impunity engulfing Myanmar for many years. Angola, one of the Africa's largest oil producers, prepares today for a general election. Voters are debating whether they should vote and sit at the polling station to monitor the process or cast their ballots and go home. A strong shake hit European currency after the exchange rate of the euro collapsed against the dollar to the less than 99 cents per euro, which puts it at the lowest level in two decades, with a drop of more than 1% against the U.S. currency. Canada has committed to assist Germany with the energy crisis, but little detail about how the two nations would col collaborate were disclosed. Miriam Zian. Canada and Germany signed a hydrogen alliance to accelerate efforts to export clean fuel to Germany by 2025. The deal was made during Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz's first official visit to Canada, which began on Sunday. The agreement will create middle-class jobs and local growth. The Canada-Germany Hydrogen Alliance is a historic step forward for our shared future. Our target is clear working towards initial exports of Canadian hydrogen to Germany by 2025. And our outcomes are clear as well, creating middle-class jobs and local growth while delivering clean energy that will help fight climate change. 
Germany is seeking long-term energy replacements for fossil fuels both to meet its climate commitments and to end its energy dependency on Russia. Scholz said there are plans to ramp up production capacity, but the majority of Germany's hydrogen needs will have to be covered by imports. According to our national hydrogen strategy published in June 2020, Germany expects a need of 90 to 110 terawatt hours hydrogen in 2030. We plan to build substantial electrolysis capacity in Germany. Still, we have to cover the majority of our hydrogen demands by imports. Both governments are clear disagreement would not immediately satisfy Germany's goal to reduce its reliance on Russian oil and gas. Germany has a preference for green hydrogen, and the pact includes a requirement for the two countries to develop a mutually agreed-upon method to define clean, low-carbon and renewable hydrogen. But the bilateral deal does not say how much hydrogen Canada and Germany think could be shipped overall by the next three years. This agreement will strengthen the strong and wide-ranging economic ties that already exist between Canada and Germany in the areas of trade, investment, research and technology. Iran's nuclear chief says Zionist entity is pushing ahead with a terrorist plot for a psychological war against the Islamic Republic's nuclear program by repeating baseless allegation against the peaceful activities. The chief also warned that the UN nuclear watchdog not to advance the regime's agenda. He also said on Wednesday that Tehran would not allow inspections beyond what stipulated into the 2015 nuclear deal as the United States prepare to respond to a proposal to revive the deal. The issue of utmost importance is that Iran is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. All of the Islamic Republic of Iran's nuclear activities are in accordance with the Safeguards Agreement. The IAEA is present in Iran and is strictly monitoring the country's nuclear activities. According to Reuters, South Korea staged an anti-terror drill simulating chemical and drone attack on the headquarters of Seoul's subway on Wednesday. As part of the country's annual Ultra Civil Defense Drills, the Ultra Civil Defense Drills, which are held from August 22 to 25, aim to check the country's crisis management and emergency uh, preparedness amid North Korea's recent missile threats. <laughs> We held an ultra civil defense drill to prepare for terror attacks on Seoul Metro headquarters. We transport 7.5 million people a day. We will keep conducting this drill with the government, military and citizens, so that we can conduct rescue operation and restoration quickly on real situation. During an inspection visit to the anti-chip missile base and the radar station, Taiwanese President uh, Wang says her people remain committed to defending the island. Weeks after China's major military maneuvers, she also warns Beijing that heavy price will be paid in the event of an invasion or an attempt invasion of Taiwan. What we need to do is impress upon our enemy that Taiwan is determined and ready to defend the country, as well as the ability to defend itself. A heavy price will be paid in the event of an invasion or attempted invasion of Taiwan, which will also be strongly condemned by the international community. A former Louisville detective Kelly Godlet pleaded guilty before a federal court in Louisville on Tuesday to help in fake search warrant that led to the killing of Breonna Tyler, a black woman whose death drove to many protests of a police violence against people of color. Godlet could face five years in prison, a $250,000 fine and three years of supervised release when she is sentenced. Argentine Vice President Cristina Fernandez lashed out on Tuesday at prosecutors saying that the arguments against her on corruption charges related to public works were false. Uh, prosecutors had a day earlier asked a judge to sentence Fernandez to 12 years in prison and bar her from holding public office for life for allegedly leading criminal conspiracy that irregularly awarded public works contracts to a friend and an ally. <laughs> El juicio con esta ficción. 
The trial begins for this fiction that was told by the prosecutors for five days, during which I sat in court listening to these kind of accusations. They were not accusations, they were fiction, a script, and a very bad one at that, and it was false. Colombia's police force said that a newspaper misreported Tuesday that it, it uh, suspended operations to forcibly eradicate coca fields as the country's new leftist government seeks to change its approach to dealing with illegal drugs. A police statement said that manual eradication teams are still operating but added that officials are stepping up efforts to persuade farmers to voluntarily adopt alternative crops. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro said on Monday that he would respect the result of an October election regardless of the result, as long as the voting is clean and transparent. In an interview with the TV Global Journal, uh, journal No Kill no, the far-right politician insisted without evidence there had been fraud in past Brazilian election. The October election will be the first since Bolsonaro took office as fears persist of potential political violence if the results are contested. The Algerian energy giant Sonatrag announced the achievement of an important oil discovery in the Saba region in Adrar province. In the, the south of the country, the preliminary estimate of the volumes of this discovery gives a volume in place between 48 and 150 million barrels. This discovery comes 28 years after the last oil discovery made in the region in 1994. The area is located 6 kilometers from Hassi, a little processing the center. The Minister of Education, Abdel Hakim Bel Abed, spoke at the opening of the three day national meeting dedicating or dedicated to the preparation of the qualification training of English teachers in the third primary year held at Hasib Ben Bouli High School in Algiers in order to ensure a successful introduction of English to primary education in 2022 2023 school year. All the material, human, and organization or rather organizational means are brought together before moving on another level in the coming years. In accordance with the decision of the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboun, to introduce English at the primary level starting from 22-23, as this language is the most widely used in the world, and its inclusion in the primary education is considered as an openness to the world and technological and scientific development. The Ministry of National Education has initiated the design of the English curriculum for the third year of primary education and the preparation of a textbook accompanying the curriculum. Turkey's President uh, Tayyip Erdogan said while receiving his uh, Palestinian counterpart Mahmoud Abbas, Turkey's reconciliation efforts with the Zionists will no way stop Ankara's support for the cause of the Palestinian. Palestinian leader arrived in Ankara just one week after Turkey and the Zionists announced their decision to restore full diplomatic relations and reappoint ambassadors for the first time since 2018. As part of our efforts to protect the two-state solution, we call on countries that believe in it to recognize the state of Palestine. We are also looking forward to becoming a full member of the United Nations, which is a very important topic. The steps taken in our relations with Israel will in no way diminish our support for the Palestinian cause. On the contrary, our Palestinian brothers say that these steps will contribute to the solution of the Palestinian issue and the improvement of the situation of the Palestinian people. Zionist occupation forces launched a campaign of raids and incursions in various areas in the West Bank, during which confrontations took place in some areas and the arrest of a number of Palestinians. The occupation forces stormed various towns in the govern governorate and the states of Nablus, Harbroun, Ramallah and Jenin and launched a campaign of arrests that targets a number of civilians. Scientists says that parts of the world are uh, lurching from drought to, the to delge in a summer of extreme weather impact, likely boosted by human-caused climate change. Zara 
And now for more international news, let's follow this roundup by Islam Seed. Journalists in the Mexican city of Acapulco on Tuesday held protests demanding an end to the violence against Mexican media workers after another journalist was killed in his car following his post citing local politicians' involvement in the disappearance of 43 students in 2014. This violence has seen 18 media workers killed and is marked as the deadliest this year. The Attorney General's Office of the Republic, the State Attorney's Office and the Municipal Government of Chilpasingo must each assume the responsibility that falls to them regarding their competence in security and province justice. It's grave and worrying that the entire country continues to be bloodied in the journalistic task. Guerrero is second nationally, then please in second place after Veracruz. Libyan officials stated on Monday that seven unknown bodies had been found in Tarhuna. More than 250 bodies have been discovered in mass graves in Tarhuna since the summer of 2020. <laughs> Hundreds of Muqtada Sadr's followers staged a sit-in at the Supreme Judicial Council of Iraq's offices on Tuesday to call for early elections to end the country's political crisis. The protesters set up camp outside the Supreme Judicial Council and carried signs calling for the authorities to dissolve parliament and take action against corruption. Today, we started our sit-in in front of the Supreme Judicial Council. Our demands are clear to everyone. Dissolving Parliament, naming the largest bloc, amending the articles of the Constitution, and working toward having an impartial judiciary that works to serve the Iraqi citizen. Due to worries of rising fuel prices and the effects of Ukraine war, Schools in Bangladesh will be closed an additional day every week in addition to cutting the length of their workdays by one hour. The shortened hours start on Wednesday. The majority of schools in Bangladesh now close on Saturdays and Fridays. Scientists say the parts of the world are lurching from drought to deluge in the summer of extreme weather impacts likely boosted by human-caused climate change. Zara Fajani. A prolonged high temperature weather with little rain, has led to continuous drought in different parts of the world. Nearly two-thirds of European territory is in a state of drought alert or warning due to heat waves and low rainfall, reducing inland shipping, electricity production and the yields of certain crops. Europe's second longest river, the Danube, has reached one of its lowest levels in the last century. Its water levels recently fell five feet in three weeks' time. The Danube Debit is low at this moment. There are sand rapids between 563 and 565 kilometers, and there are ships waiting to pass. 18 of them are self-propelled, and 62 are not self-propelled. The ones waiting to sail up the river wait at 559 kilometers, and the ones wanting to go downstream at 570 kilometers. The St. Louis area and 88% of Kentucky early in July were considered abnormally dry, and then the skies opened up and deadly flooding devastated communities. In the United States and really in, in many parts of the world, this has been a summer of hydroclimate extremes with pretty wild swings between drought on the one hand and flood on the other. And in a number of places we've seen record-breaking droughts immediately broken by, in some cases, record-breaking floods. The contrast has been especially extreme. The heat waves have affected the southwestern regions of China. The Jolling River, tributary of the Yangtze River, has dried up, leading to a problematic drought for farmers, especially for rice and soybean crops, which are very water-intensive. According to the trend of precipitation, it will generally be less than 25 millimeters in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River in the next 10 days. Under these circumstances, the agricultural drought will continue or further develop. Scorching temperatures across the globe this year have people wondering if climate change is making some places too hot to live in. Some of the poorest and hottest countries in the world are negatively affected by the climate change. However, a similar situation is likely to be occurring in other developing nations. That's all for now. For more updates, you may follow us on our social media platform, Facebook, Twitter and Facebook. And bye for now.